Hey guys, what's up? Oh, hey, what's up? This is Casey. This is Coach Tom. This is Shot Science Overtime number 111. We are going to have a topic that we talk about today, just like we do every single day that we do these live shows. Um, and while we're doing that, you guys are going to send us your questions, and it can be anything basketball related, um, shooting, dribbling, passing, playing defense, how to talk to your coach, talk to your coach, uh, how to get into college programs, whatever it is, send them our way, and we'll do our best to answer those questions when we get to the Q&A portion of the, the show today. Um, and you can hit us up on any of our uh, social media links. So on Twitter, we are at Shot Science. You can hit us up on Facebook, where we are Shot Science, Google Plus, Shot Science, um, maybe even Snapchat. I don't know. Send them, send them our way, and we will do our best to get back to you guys on as many questions as we can. You can leave them here in the chat, too. And let's see. Um, so our topic for today is going to be two tips to being a standout college-ready basketball player. And we're going to get into that in just a second. But just remember, this is, this is our live show. This is going to be going to be a little bit longer form than regular videos. If you're not into it, that's cool. But we're here, and we want to answer your guys' questions. And um, we'll try to do our best to answer as many as we can. Um, so let's jump into our topic. Uh, so what are your thoughts on how to become a, a standout college-ready basketball player? Well, you know, the things that come to my mind immediately on that is that uh, number one, you have to have certain physical abilities, athleticism being the, pr uh, the primary ability for most everybody. There are some players who get to get, uh, get to play on the next level without having super athleticism because they have other skills that allow them to perform well. Those things are, they, they're really good shooters. Um, they're really good defenders. And, you know, I, I say those words and one of the names that comes to my mind right off is is uh, uh, Kraft, uh, what's it? Aaron Kraft, Aaron Kraft that plays, uh, played at Ohio State, and he's now playing for the Santa Cruz uh, Warriors uh, D-League team. For the, for the Golden State Warriors. Uh, for the Golden State Warriors. And, you know, he just really is an excellent defensive player, and he's getting a lot of mileage out of that as well. And so I think that just being skilled in, um, um, in different skills as well as your, your footwork, your ability to shoot the basketball in different situations, the different types of shots that you can shoot. Well, are I was really gonna, important. I was going to say that you want to be a very versatile player. You do want to be versatile. The guys players. that are only specialists, you're really pigeonholing yourself. Yep. And you know, if you're only a good shooter, that's great. You're going to find a scenario where you might fit in every once in a while, but you're also going to easily be be taken advantage of by the other right. team. Um, maybe you have an off night and you're not shooting so well. And then your coach is like, well, this guy's not working there. And then you get kind of put on the end of the list again. Yeah. But if you're able to do a lot of things, like you're able to come out there and, and shoot, but you're also able to take the guy off the dribble. You're also able to play some defense. You just become way more valuable and, uh, your stock as a player goes up, even though maybe your physical attributes aren't maybe where some of the other guys are. Right. So, uh, you know, maybe there's a guy that's, he's, five inches taller than you and he can jump out of the gym and he's real strong and everything, but he has a hard time taking the ball, to the basket. Uh, you can step in and you can actually take that guy's place because you can, you can get it done better than he can. Right. And college coaches are looking for guys who are competitive that will compete and compete all the time. And our packages. Uh, and yeah, that's right. They're packages. And you know, one of the things I can remember for being involved in the travel teams and whatnot is um, just how um, we work with our kids about what college coaches look for when they come onto the floor uh, to watch you play. Uh, one of the things that we always talk to our guys about is they're checking out your attitude on the bench, your attitude on the floor, what kind of comportment that you have uh, as a player uh, on both of those areas. And sometimes what happens is that uh, you have a little uh, uh, incident where things go against you and, you know, you're throwing a little fit or you mope back to the uh, uh, bench. Um, you know, the coach reaches out to give you a five and you walk right by him. Those kinds of things coaches turn off to immediately. Now, those are things that uh, uh, kind of make you college ready too, is being able to <clears throat> fit into molds that are going to, that those coaches want to see. They don't want to see donkeys. And so they're looking for players that are not only coachable, uh, also that they are ability to uh, uh, be good citizens. And, you know, we've had some incidents recently, recently and a lot of you probably have seen those, where some of those uh, uh, college players' comportment isn't very good. So. Well, you jumped ahead a little bit on, on tip number I two, did. but yeah, I was in, I was just going to say that you know when coaches are looking at at players, they are they are not looking at the guy that has the the N one mixtapes dribbling yeah. skills, 
or you know the the guy that uh, uh, is throwing down the best uh, acrobatic dunks or whatever. Right. They coaches almost could care less about that stuff. What they're looking at are guys that put the ball in the basket. They're looking at guys that work well in a in a team setting that will fill this spot that they're looking to fill. Um, you know, they don't they don't care if you're the next uh, Harlem Globetrotter that, you know, that, that that does not matter to them at all. Yeah. You might not be able to dribble between your legs, but if, if you can take the ball to the basket, that's the guy they're going to want to get. Um, and so, you know, you see people that they're always asking us questions or you see them working out all the time and they're they're just focusing on dribble skills or they're focusing on being a point guard or or whatever. And yet they can't play defense. They couldn't step into another position. Uh, you know, as a point guard, they couldn't go in and do a post move because, you know, they've never done it before. So to be kind of college ready standout guy, you need to be able to do everything or girl. Right. Um, you need to be a point guard that can go into the post and do some post moves. You need to be a point guard that can go out on the wing and hit a shot. You need to be a point guard that can dribble. You need to be a point guard that can distribute the ball. If you're a post player, you need to be able to step out on the perimeter. You need to be able to play in the post. You need to be able to play defense. You need to be able to distribute the ball. You should be able to step into any position and and be good to go. And if you look at a lot of those guys, and this is these are like top level guys. I yeah. mean, this, this but it's true even on guys that are kind of on you know uh, the lower levels or even D two or D three guys. The guys that go on and girls that go on are the ones that that can do that. Um, you look at somebody like LeBron James. Uh, you know, he jumps right to the NBA because he he could play any position. He could play in the post. He could play on the perimeter. He could be a point guard and bring the ball up. Um, you look at somebody like uh, Steph Curry, even he could go into the post. I've seen him do some post moves. Yeah. He's playing defense, even though he gives up a lot of height and size on guys. He can distribute the ball. He can shoot the ball. Um, you know, Steve Nash, same thing. All these guys, they, they or, you know, even uh, Kevin Durant, he would be a perfect example. Sure. Um, people like that, they just, they have all the tools. And if you have all the tools, a college coach is going to recognize that and say, I need that person because, you know, they're a valuable person on my team. They can step into these different positions. I can use them in, in any situation that I need. It's not like I'm picking up some specialized guy. Um, so I, I just think people need to have that approach when they're thinking about putting together their skills and stuff. Well, that's really true, too, especially if you're not a super athletic guy. College coaches, especially those on the Division uh, One level and others as well, uh, they're looking for guys that have all of these different uh, pluses, plus they are athletic. Yeah. And athletic means uh, uh, that they have unusual abilities to uh, run and jump uh, and uh, they excel at that. You take a look at some of the guys that have played uh, in this last uh, uh, tournament. Uh, here's a, a guy like Frank Comiskey at seven feet, and he's able to play uh, outside facing the basket. He's able to get to the basket and create offense for himself. So coaches are looking for real athletic guys, but they're not looking for those guys who are athletic who have no other skills because basketball does require that you be able to handle the basketball. It, it uh, uh, requires that you be able to rebound the basketball. You'd be able to defend the basketball. Well, that's, so that's all those it, things are so important uh, uh, for you if you're hoping to go to the next level. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the other things I was going to say is that, uh, you know, coaches, college coaches are looking specifically at players that fit a certain body type and athleticism. Mm -hmm. Skills are part of the equation, but not as much as you would think. So they're looking for a, a guy that's, you know, this size and this body type. Maybe they're looking for a six, six, eight and 230 or something mm -hmm. like that. If you're not falling into those, those uh, kind of very specific uh, kind of uh, attributes, you need to figure out a way to show up on their radar yeah. and it's not going to be because you walked into the gym like a lot of those guys did because a lot of those guys they walked in the gym the coach sees them and they're like okay i got my eye on that guy yeah. but if you're you know like me and you're six two and uh you know you walk into the gym and you don't have anything else going for you good luck getting anybody to take a second look yeah, yeah. and if they see you on a stat sheet they're going to go right by you so you better be able to do all these things otherwise what, what why would they even care yeah that's so right. that's that's on you um, so one of the things we want to hear less of is how do I be a better point guard? How do I be a better, uh, you know, post player? You need to be a better everything. Yeah. Otherwise you're going to really limit yourself. You should be able to step into the post. You should be able to shoot from the perimeter. You should be able to pass the ball. 
You should be able to set screens. You should be able to go back door, move without the ball, play defense. All those things are super important. Well, and the formula for that too is real important. You know, um, you don't learn how to do all of those things specifically just by playing games. And one of the things that's been a kind of huge criticism uh, recently of AAU level basketball, I don't think it's just uh, relegated just to AAU, but it kind of has that tag on it is that there is not enough coaching that is going on to these young players and they come along and they're unable to maybe move on to the next level because they haven't been coached up very well. Uh, by the people who are, are are working with them. And so it's real important that you uh, take the time to spend on your skills. And, you know, those skills, like Casey's mentioned, they, they go across a spectrum from uh, footwork to uh, just uh, um, how you handle yourself uh, comportment-wise on the floor. And comportment means well, we what kind of a we, guy we are haven't got you? there yet. Hold on. Hang on, hang on. But just being able to be a really solid citizen when it comes to being a player. Um, okay, well, let's, okay, stop. let's stop. We're going to okay. go to point two. You've, all right. you've run all over that one. All right. Okay, so point number two is that you need to be a player that a coach is going to want on their team. Mm -hmm. And the way that you, you do that is the things that you're talking about is your comportment, uh, your, your ability to have leadership qualities, yep. um, your uh, initiative that you take, the effort that you show. All of those things are going to add up to somebody that a coach wants on their team. And those are not like the things that show up on stat sheets yeah. or things that, that you would see unless they actually were there watching you play. And a lot of that can go a very long ways. And like you were talking about Aaron Kraft earlier, yeah. um, you know, he's, he's six, two, he's a white dude. He's maybe not the most athletic guy, um, but he puts it all out on the floor. I mean, you yeah. can watch him play defense and he's going up against these guys that are, you know, top, D league players, probably the guys that are going up and down to the NBA as well. And he's shutting them down because he has put, put in the, the work on making his defense where, where it should be in terms of his skills. And he is putting so much effort and initiative into that as well. Well, he averaged about four or five steals a game too, which is really uh, uh, an outstanding character for a guy like that. Um, so, you know, um, if you're hoping to make that next level, those are some of the things that you have to really make sure that you uh, have working for you. And, and, and one, of the, the, one of the things as you were talking, Casey, I was just thinking about some of the comments that Casey Hill had made in the video uh, that we did with him about making the Casey team. Hill is the head coach for the NBA D-League team of the Santa Cruz Warriors. Right. And, you know, we work with them every once in a while. But, you know, those guys, they, they – uh, they look for personality qualities in people a lot more okay. than you might think. Right. They don't want to play with or have guys play for them that are jerks, are selfish, um, you know, aren't looking out for the other guys. And that's why we say, you know, and this is stuff that you guys probably already know, but mm -hmm. you barely ever see people really put this into practice. Right. So you need to really be thinking about this yourself and think, okay, well, I'm going to show incredible initiative. I'm going to show incredible effort. I'm going to be a leader. And, you know, this needs to be something that you kind of grease the wheels with initially, and maybe it becomes part of who you are later. But, I mean, you need to put that kind of into play because we don't see it very often, barely ever, you know, and especially um, on the kind of high school level. We don't see that very often where people actually take that initiative and do that stuff. Right. Um, because you can have all the skills in the world, but if you kind of are not not a good person or a good teammate, Nobody's going to want to play with you, and you're not going to get the coaches wanting to play yeah. you at all. So that's true. So you yeah. got you kind of have to get your act together. And we talk about that stuff in our make the team videos, where uh, you know we tell you the, the kind of things that you can do: be the first guy at practice, be the last guy to leave, work on your stuff outside of practice, um, uh, help the coach out, be the first guy in line, support your teammates. support your teammates. This uh, goes on and on. And I, on. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things that you can do, and and that stuff stands out to, to coaches. They like guys like that. Those are the guys they want to have on their team, and they might not even be the most skilled, or uh, you know, maybe if it's between one guy or the other, they might take the guy that's the better teammate than the guy that's you know the the more skilled guy, yeah, or more uh, you know, kind of the, the attributed guy. Yeah, T uh, coaches don't want to deal with those kinds of people who are kind of negative, and so. Uh, they'll pass them over. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think that's going to do it for our topic today, you guys. Uh, if you want to hear more about that kind of stuff, or you you want to know more kind of opinions coaches might have on on uh, you know getting kids into colleges, let us know, and we'll we'll talk more about that. But 
send us your questions because we're going to jump right into the Q and a stuff right now. So if you have a question on anything basketball related, shooting, passing, dribbling, defense, uh, coaches, whatever, uh, let us know. And we're going to do our best to answer them back. And you can hit us up on, on Twitter where we are at shot science. You can hit us up on Facebook, Google plus here in the chat on YouTube, on the, the stream of this video. And uh, we will do our best, but Twitter is the best. So send us, send us some Twitter questions. Um, let's see, let's refresh this and take a look. Okay, we got some questions here. Let's see. This one is from Aaron McCambridge, who says, exercises to help increase grip on ball for dunking, et cetera. Okay, let's, let's hit this one real hard right out of the bat here. The, the, okay, people need to stop worrying about dunking and dunking technique and all that stuff. If you can jump high enough to dunk, it is, it is simply that easy. Yeah. It's a layup that you, you know, it's, you're just basically throwing down in the basket. There is, when it comes to technique for jumping, yes, there is technique for jumping, but if you're, if you're looking more at it as there being some different secret to dunking, there is none. It is exactly the same footwork as doing any kind of layup, uh, any kind of uh, two stop or two foot jump stop into a shot. I mean, it's all exactly the same. There is no secret to it. Increasing your grip on the ball, it's not going to matter. Um, you know, a lot of people are always t asking us, how do, I, how do I palm the ball? How do I do this and that? The fact of the matter is, is that you barely ever really have to palm the ball in basketball. You know, I, I think I've said it before. I've been able to palm the ball since I was like, you know, 10 or 11 years old. And I don't think I've ever done it for any real skill at all in basketball because you don't really want to have any reason to do that, uh, you know. If you're shooting, you don't want to have a death grip on the ball. If you're uh, passing, you don't really need to do that because you're doing two-handed passes. Uh, if you're dribbling and you're palming the ball, you're traveling. I mean, there's really no reason to do it. And it, you go up for a layup, the ball should really just fit in your hand. I'm not palming the ball right now. You know, if I turn it over, it falls right out. So if I go up for a layup, it's really just being cradled by my finger, finger pads. There is no reason to need to palm the ball sure you can work on your grip and that might help you a little bit on certain things but it's not a necessity to be able to palm the ball or anything to be and especially to be able to dunk the ball you know if you if you can get the elevation that you need you don't have to be able to have this monster grip on it to be able to throw it down that's it, point it, the case he's making it's not need it. it's not a uh, you know a, a deciding factor no i mean to get the ball you have to get the ball up and over the rim i mean if maybe if you can get the ball over like right there you can dunk so you need to get six or seven inches of clearance yeah, over the that's rim right. that's right um so that's the real key to that is yeah. being able to jump high enough to do it yep um and in terms of grip when we're talking about grip, especially for something like shooting, it's mostly just about spreading out these two fingers, your, your pinky and your thumb, and kind of getting that nice grip there and not putting it on your palm, having the one finger test so that you have it on your finger pads. Okay? That's, that's the key to grip. All right. Uh, you know, we see people spending so much time working with tennis balls and all this stuff, and it, I don't think that that's really necessary. If you're out there and you're dribbling and pounding the ball, and you're playing, you don't really need to do all that stuff. Okay, let's move on. We have very strong opinions on that, apparently. <laughs> um, this one is from uh, Caveman Venom 4 who says, Hey, Shot Sons, I've heard people in the comments talking about overtraining when I watch mixtapes of 12 to 14-year-olds. Should I train my heart out at a young age? I'm 14. Or should I just practice dribbling, shooting, and defense and wait until I'm 17 or so to improve my speed, vertical, stamina, etc.? Hmm. Okay. You can overtrain as a young person, um, especially if you're not getting enough, enough rest and recovery. I mean, the fact, the bottom line is actually that you, you can train as much as you want, as long as you give your body enough time to rest and recover. Yeah. But most people don't do that. They just hit it day after day after day after day. And one of the things you were talking about earlier is guys going out and just playing games constantly. Right. That is not really the best approach to have. What we think is better is definitely having playing games as part of your experience, but working on developing your skills every day right so Absolutely. like doing the things that he's talking about dribbling shooting playing defense uh I would, I would put passing and things like that in there too and doing doing the three pillars of practice the diligent slowed down meticulous stuff um then the second pillar being game speed game intensity and then doing the third pillar which is game experience a lot of people put so much into pillar three without putting much into pillars one and two right 
And that's kind of a bad approach. Well, one of the things that this young man uh, mentions here is that, or should he wait until 17 or so to improve my speed, vertical stamina? No, no, no. That's all part of developing yourself as a player. That doesn't mean you have to immerse yourself in hour upon hour upon hour of just really uh, uh, brutal speed work or vertical work or stamina work, any of that. But what you want to do is have a, a nice mixture of those kinds of things in with your basketball skills and your, your speed just through your maturation process. If you're 14 years old, your body hasn't finished developing yet, and it probably won't until you're 17 or 18 years old. And mm -hmm. that's the typical uh, process. And some people are later than that. But the problem, the situation is, is that if you were working on all of these basketball skills and you, inc you also uh, put some work in there on your speed and agility and, and vertical, that's fine. Just don't overdo it. And you'll find that it all comes together as kind of a nice package. Now, <laughs> if you want to take and improve your, your vertical, I wouldn't really spend too much time on that until you get around uh, uh, the, the age of 16 or 17 for the vertical, because it can be really, really hard on your body to gain that extra inches that you want to get. Well, I would just say this, too, is that there's two points I would say. Number one is that if you're a younger person, especially mm -hmm. under the age of 15 or 16 years old, you should focus more on developing your skills and playing mm -hmm. games, right? because that's going to be way more beneficial to you than spending any time working in the weight room or doing any kind of uh, resistance training is doing those things. Right. After that, things change a little bit. And I think that it's good to add in some stuff like, uh, you know, conditioning and, and uh, athletic training and stuff like that. But I would also say that if you're going to do it, especially if you're a young person, do body weight specific stuff, functional exactly. stuff. Um, you know, a lot of times we have people say, oh, I, I ran five miles yesterday and, and I did that on top of my basketball game. And it's like, why, why would you do that? That doesn't translate to basketball conditioning at all. There's no point in a basketball game where you run for five miles straight. No, no. Everything in basketball is essentially short sprints. Yeah. And short meaning anywhere from uh, three yards to 30 yards. And so that's all the quickness that you really need to work on there and, and change the direction and stuff like that too. Yeah. So you should be doing things like interval training yeah. and, and doing, uh, you know, suicides is one way to do that, but, or you could do, uh, you know, uh, uh, interval training on the track where you run the straights and walk the, the, the curves. Right. I mean, you, you need to kind of approach it with, with some forethought. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. Right. One of the things that we encourage people to do is get themselves into the the uh, jump rope regimen. That's that really helps you an awful lot in stamina, and also in strength development of your legs and of your arms. One of the things that we like a lot is this: is that uh, you take and do three or four sets of speed jumping every day. And speed jumping means that you're turning that rope as fast as you can uh, turn it, and you're getting just off at of two feet. Okay, and the thing that we find is that the stamina increases, the, the vertical probably increases a little bit as well. Footwork. Uh, uh, the footwork and just turning that rope as quickly as you can, that really exercise those arms out. One of the things that you would do if you're doing the speed uh, uh, jumping is we encourage you to keep track of how many reps you can make in one minute. And so they're one minute uh, uh, inter uh, not intervals, but uh, exercises where you go as hard as you can for one minute. And if you stop and think about it, most people would say, okay, well, uh, how many can you do? Well, probably people will say, well, I can do maybe 60 or so. Well, in reality, the first time you do it, if you can get the rope and the sequence all working pretty well for you, you'd probably be in the 90s. And one of the best that I've had, uh, in fact, two of the best, was a, um, a young lady about 17 years old uh, and another uh, young man who was about the same age, and they both were about 185 reps in the course of one minute. And the thing that's really cool about that is the rope is turning so quickly, you can't really hear it you can, or see it. You can hear it better than you can see it. But all of that is really good for just building your stamina and your explosion as well. Right. So just uh, kind of approach it logically and and uh, and comprehensively okay okay that kind of answers that question right there here's too. Jahan Zeb Amer who's asking any tips to increase explosiveness and are squats bad for basketball knees please answer yeah. okay in terms of in terms of explosiveness go check out our vertical jump series and the right. vertical jump handbook because in that it addresses explosiveness along with vertical and like just general athleticism right. um, and that would be our best tip to you because 
we made that for you guys uh, thinking that you would do it without kind of loading up weights and stuff like that as well, because we want it to be body weight and functional for you. Um, and then you're asking, are squats bad for basketball knees? Bad squats are bad for anybody's knees. Yeah. And unless you're working with a trainer that that has a good background in doing squats and stuff, I would say don't do them because yeah. you will hurt yourself. Yep. And that's from somebody that, that I do squats every single week. But I, you know, I, I am at the level where I can do that. Um, if you're doing it just because, you know, you think you know how to do it, I would say you're probably wrong because I watch people in the gym and they do it wrong every single time. So I would say only do that if that's part of like a training regimen you're doing with some other person that is qualified. And if you're at a, a, an appropriate age, yeah. if you're 14 or 15 years old doing squats, I think that that's a mistake. Yes. yes, um, yes, yes. And you know, some people might not like that, but that's true. You're still growing. And I think that you would be better served to work on your skills and work on body weight and functional specific training. Exactly. Um, and if somebody disagrees with me, Hey, I'll talk to you about it. Yeah. Okay. This one is from Zach Pate who says, hello, Tom, I met you at the final four, uh, final four fan feature and wanted to thank you very much for the tips. I'm the one who came up to you and let you know I subscribed. Well, Zach, thank you so much for getting back to us with that note. That is appreciated. And it was fun working with you. Um, hope you, you follow our, our uh, videos a lot. And if we can help you on anything, all you have to do is give us a little call uh, on online and we'll get right back to you and see what we can do to help you out. Yeah, it was cool to meet all the people it that uh, came up cool. to us there. Yeah, very cool. Um, here's one from DGK Steez who says, Will using five kilogram ankle weights help me in basketball, uh, for example, jumping? running, et cetera. And how do I use them to improve me to the max ditch the ankle weights? Yeah. True. Um, you know, those are, those are some of the worst things you can use because exactly. they are essentially adding uh, resistance to you uh, that is not specific or functional to basketball. It's also rough on your, on your joints. Absolutely. Uh, and you know, they really don't do much. I think that they screw up people's movement patterns too. And, yep. and uh, you know, I think you're better served to kind of have um a comprehensive, again, approach, functional approach, do interval training, that will take you much further than using ankle weights. And especially in terms of, of jumping and stuff, jumping is a high impact yeah. uh, movement. You don't want to be adding weights to your body. Right. That is a big mistake. Especially for the knees and ankles. Um, okay. And, you know, you'll maybe you'll be all right as a young person, get up to your, your 30s and 40s, you'll be the guy that's crippled as, as an older person with no cartilage, and then you'll really be, really be sorry uh, if you don't hurt yourself now. Um, here's one from Andrew Collins who says, do you think it's possible to just act your way through basketball, the basketball season? I'm just wondering. No. <laughs> act your way? What does that mean? Yeah, yeah. If you don't perform and get the job done, you're probably not going to be playing. Uh, unless you know the coach, if you coach your son, uh, maybe that's the case. Maybe you, maybe you get to play more, but if you're acting your way through, you're not going to play. No, I mean, you gotta, you gotta put up and produce. Otherwise, yeah. why are you there? That's exactly right. And if, if you're asking us that, that means that you probably are not feeling so good about where you're at. So I would say get to work, get to work on your skills, make something happen. Um, okay. This one is from BR Abba, uh, Abhinit. <laughs> oh. Man, Ab Hinav, I, Hinav, I, I'm sorry I butchered that. Um, what's the best way to defend in the post when the player has come real close to the rim and otherwise to, I mean, post defense? You know, um, there's a number of ways to to defend the post. And and one of the things that, that I kind of like to do is if we have a, a post player who is uh, assertive, uh, is bigger than we are and uh, kind of can score around the basket, we don't want them to catch the basketball. And so we will full front those people so that it's really difficult to throw the ball into them. And when you take that away from them, they will try and throw it over the top. So there's a, a component part that goes with that. And that is help side defenders have to be ready to slide over and help you in rotation if they take and lob the ball over the top. And, and what we've found is, is this, is that uh, when we play anybody that has any abilities, we'll always front them, always. If we find that they are, are, are ineffective in their uh, moves at the post and that we can control them, then we will take and, and play on the side that the ball is on. If, in other words, if the, they're on the right post or the right block, 
will be on the high side of them to kind of keep the ball from coming in. But uh, if they're uh, if they're effective, we don't we do not want them to catch the basketball. And it depends a lot on help side defense. So it you does. need to get your teammates on the same page yeah. as you. You know, there's another little technique that we teach all of the the guys too, and and that is we want to discourage the pass into that big. And one of the ways that we tell our players we we want them to play is that they have an arm that is fully extended uh, so that that the, the player on the offense is trying to feed the ball and can see that very definitely. And if we've got that, they know they have to get the ball up and over that hand. And it's not so easy to do and be very accurate. I was watching a game yesterday on television and, and they were trying, no, it wasn't, it was a local tournament I was at and they tried to feed to that person and they threw it out of bounds about three times just because that person had their arm extended to full extension. You kind of deny that or encourage them not to throw it in. Well, think about it. If, if they're if the only pass they can get in is a big looping over the top pass, yeah. your defensive help should be able to have enough time to get over there and make that a very difficult catch for that guy. Yeah. But if you're just sitting there and you're letting him get fed every time into the post, I mean, you've essentially let him have have the, the keys to the truck because he's he's, you know, essentially going to make you react to him. He should have to react to what you're doing. Right. That puts you in control. So make that pass difficult. And right. if it's if it's a looping pass, it's going to take more time. It's going to be more obvious. And then your defensive help is going to slide in, and they might pick it off or at least make or, it difficult. Or take a charge from that guy who was reaching for it. One of the things that we did this year is that we had a team that, that had several big guys, and they played them at the same time. And we didn't feel like we could really do much about it if they caught the ball. So we fronted them beat them easily both times because that was the essence of their game, just throwing it into the post, throwing it in the post. And when you take that away, then they have to go other avenues and they weren't as effective there. All right, here's one from our buddy Nate Thompson, yeah. who's at Nate T underscore AF on Twitter. He says, uh, how can I push myself when, uh, when I'm working out by myself when there is no one to play D on me or get my rebounds? What type of drills should I do where it's easy to get up a, a lot of good shots? Oh, I, okay. Everybody is always wondering how they do stuff without other people and all this stuff. The thing is, is that you have to be creative. It's on you. You're, you're kind of the person that needs to make it happen. So uh, we can't exactly tell you specifically. We can kind of give you some guidance, but it's really on you. What I would say when you're talking about shooting drills and kind of getting uh, the proper um, approach to that, like, like we said earlier, you always have to have the three pillars of practice. So you want to do the dialed in kind of skill development that's real kind of uh, diligent slowed down. I would say something like form shooting drill is good for that. Then you want to have the second pillar, which is game speed, game intensity. For that, if you don't have any anybody to step in and play defense for you, you need to do some visualization of that defender. Maybe do something like Dennis Stanton's spin shooting dr uh, drill, mm -hmm. which is a really good one. Um, if you go uh, search for Dennis Stanton's uh, spin shooting drill, you can find that on YouTube. Right. That's really good because it in incorporates bunch of different types of shooting um, also gets you game speed moves you from uh, different positions and, and place placement on the floor so we would highly suggest that and then the third is just getting game experience so you would have to go out and find somewhere to play whether that's a playground or an open gym or whatever that is um, but you need to figure that out um, but you know a lot of it is if you don't have somebody to play defense on you you got to visualize it or you know that, go, that, go tell mom or dad hey I need some help yeah that's that's really an important point I think it's just the visualization and we have a, a video on that um, and and it's really important that you be able to utilize that technique and well, not in all aspects of your well, there, game, there's two not just shooting there's two types of visualization that would fall into this one is the mental rehearsal and yep. that's that's yep. where you're just sitting there thinking about the scenarios right. and running right. that through your brain. The second kind of visualization is kind of what I'm talking about here is where you are out there on the court, you're, you're playing game speed, game intensity and visualizing that guy being there. Right. Um, it, you know, I talk when we talked to, to Grayson, the professor, right. Um, Grayson was saying that, you know, he spent a lot of time when he was growing up and I guess probably even, even now where he would be out there by himself, just visualizing, what he was doing right. when he was putting his 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 uh, ball handling stuff together. So you have to kind of be able to do that too. You don't necessarily need to have somebody there, but uh, 
if you can, that's great, but you have to make do otherwise. And that's well, and, and practicing everything at game speed that that is essential. Yep. One of the things that happens game intensity you, too. Yeah. And game intensity. If you never do that and you get into a game, the speed of the game is going to just run you over. So you need to really work on that. All right. We got another Tom C here. Tom C says, mm-hmm. Hey guys, do you think that becoming a ref could help, uh, could improve my game? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe your understanding of the rules and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. That, the best way to improve your game would be to develop your skills and get game experience. But you know what? Uh, becoming a ref, uh, I think that probably would be a, a really interesting pursuit for you. Uh, for maybe uh, even later on, I don't know how old you are. But um, the thing is, is that uh, there's a lot of satisfaction that, that officials get out of officiating. And it's all not people yelling and screaming at you. Uh, you know, it's... It's really learning how to control the game um, and, and deal with uh, the crowd, the coaches, the players. Um, I think it could probably be pretty rewarding. I don't think I could do it because um, it doesn't fit my personality very well, but I think it's a great job for people that are interested, in it, especially youngsters. Well, I, I did it for a while, yeah. <laughs> like uh, refing youth league stuff, and that it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if that's maybe it's something that you might like, but I, I did not enjoy it. I don't think it helped me at all. It was just something to do. Yeah. Um, I don't th- like I said, skill development, game experience. Yeah. Well, and the other thing, too, is that everybody knows more about the rules than the officials do. Okay, this one's from Lucas Hernandez, who says, Hey, coach, what is your opinion on all these high school mixtapes? Are they hurting basketball with over dribbling and being too fancy? Um. You know, that's an interesting question. Uh, I think I don't think it's the mixtapes' fault. I think it's it's just basketball culture yes. has, has kind of pushed people into thinking that it's all about dunks and dazzling dribbles and mm-hmm. and stuff like that. When you know that stuff can be actually be neutralized by teams and players that are all around skilled. Yes, um, sure, that stuff is flashing and looks good on highlight tapes and stuff like that, but it doesn't really get the job done. No. Um, if you watch the, the, the teams and, and players that are truly successful, they are not doing that stuff, especially every single time down the floor. Watch, you know, even if you watch somebody like LeBron James, arguably the best player in the league right now and probably in a long time, he, he is not doing, uh, you know, um, dunk contest dunks every time. He's not putting on a, a ball handling display every time. Pretty much most of the stuff he's doing is is to get the score. That's right. You watch a team like the Spurs or the Warriors; they are not doing any any craziness. Uh, there, you know, occasionally you'll see Steph Curry do some some pretty uh, incredible ball handling stuff, but it's also still not stationary. It's like he is actually using that to neutralize the defense. Yep. Um, so I think that kind of on the surface, a lot of people get caught up in that stuff. And you know what? It's fun to watch that every once in a while. I watch it every once in a while too, because it's, it displays like great athleticism and sometimes, you know, great skill development, but you have to keep in mind that the point of basketball is to put the ball in the basket. A lot of people lose sight of that style points count for zero on the stat sheet and on your record. So you need to keep in mind that putting the ball in the basket is the most important part of basketball. It doesn't matter how you do it. You can shoot it from three-point range. You can put up a mid-range shot. You can do a layup. You can do it. You know, even the simplest shot is going to get you those those points. So, uh, you know, I I don't think it's necessarily those things. Those t- mixtapes are hurting basketball. I think it's mostly that's kind of where some people's uh, interest lies. Yeah. And uh, don't be the person that kind of falls into that trap. <laughs> but it's okay to watch that stuff. I don't think there's a problem with that. Um, let's see. This one is Harris Cows or Cause, who says, "How can I work on my defense alone?" Um, well, you know that kind of gets back to the visualization yep. thing we talked about a while ago. Uh, visualization is a really powerful influence on all sports if you allow it to uh, be a part of what you do. And we have videos on that, uh, of a video on visualization, where you actually are envisioning that there is a defender there and that you are going to beat them so and so. Uh, and so I think I think that's an important part of all of it. I think working on the footwork is extremely important. Yes. Um, if you do um, st- uh, kind of our step drag defense, work on doing that. You could even have like your mom or dad stand out there, give them a basketball, have them swing the ball from side to side, have you adjust to where it goes. Um, work on beating beating people to the spots. 
instead of letting them go and you recovering, beat them to the spot. Um, you know, work on your, uh, one of the things that we always used to do was the step drag and we do that, you know, make two or three step drags, switch directions, swing it back the other way uh, and kind of zigzag back behind the court and kind of work on our footwork that way. Um, I mean, there's, there's tons of things that you can do. You just have to yeah. make it happen. Well, and one of the things defensively, I think that's a real uh, limiting factor for most players is the fact they don't know how to move their feet. And, and so footwork uh, is a super important part of defense, and that's pretty much you work that on your own. Uh, and then if you can occasionally get somebody out there who will move on you a little bit, that really helps you too. And watching the games that I watched yesterday, uh, I was appalled at how poorly – uh, that was a girls game, but it, that wouldn't have made any difference. I don't think the guys games often are much different. And, but the fact is they don't know how to move their feet defensively. Well, that was, I think we talked about this one a uh, few nights ago or something like that. We were talking about the defense that is played in like the NBA, where it's a lot of straight legs, stand up, kind of yeah. turn your head yeah. defense. Whereas yeah. you should be playing defense in a defensive stance the entire time you're on defense. Yeah. You should have good defensive position. You shouldn't have to bend your knees, flex your toes, turn. I mean, that should not be something that you have to do every time you're playing defense and something happens. You need to be ready to go at all times and be kind of defensively in in, in uh, the best position too. Um, and if you watch, you know, there's there's certain teams that do do that. And then there's, there's certain teams that really have almost no defense unless it's on ball. Um, so uh, in terms of working on it by yourself, I mean, you just kind of have to make it happen. I think footwork is probably the best way. Yeah, footwork is huge. Um, this one is from Marvin Ramirez, who says, what's the best way to get quicker as a point guard? Like we say, don't worry about position stuff. Getting quicker is is one of those things where you have to work on um, kind of kind of uh, footwork drills, I think, are really good. Uh, using our vertical jump series is really good. Well, um, let, let's touch on why that vertical jump uh, program is good for helping them with quickness and explosion for a second. Well, mostly it's because you're, you're doing stuff like um, – footwork drills essentially you're right. doing ladder drills you're doing dot drills and you're working jump on rope. speed and quickness and out of that you develop uh, additional power explosiveness uh, uh, all of that is really good but just working on some of those vertical jump drills that we have which are based really upon just body weight okay um yeah so i mean that would be our suggestion on that stuff um this one is from tj de la pena who says any tips on increasing my shooting range uh, yeah, I get that question a ton. And usually the biggest problem that people have with shooting range is they have not figured out how to use the leg power. And we have a, a video that will help you with that. It's called Make the Three-Pointer, Get Your Legs Into It. And so if you check that out, that will give you some clues as to how you can extend your range. One of the things that we also teach is this, is that you extend your range incrementally. Maybe you start at eight feet and then you're at 12 feet and then you're at 16 feet and then finally you get yourself out to the three-point line. And by developing the, the, the proper power for those longer distances, then it's a lot easier when you finally get out beyond the three-point line. Yeah, I mean, that's progressively moving yourself back in a yeah. way that's going to make sure that your muscle memory is where it needs to be. Yeah. Um, a lot of people think that they can just shoot and work on that five foot shot and then step back to 20 feet yeah. and it's going to be there. And that just doesn't happen because you haven't put the, the work in to have the muscle memory, the strength, the connectivity, all that stuff just falls off as yeah. soon as you step back because yeah. you're heaving it and there's uh, well, no mechanics. That's, that's what happens is that usually uh, with the younger players, particularly when they move back, the ball comes back over their shoulder and they're just heaving the basketball <clears throat> and hoping it's going to get there. But you... The thing that's really important in shooting a basketball is to remember that about 70 to 80% of the power for your shooting comes from those muscles, from your core muscles through uh, your legs. Those are the largest muscles in your body. And oftentimes what we do is we just rely upon our power from our shoulders and that's not enough. And so we look at the shoulders and arms as our guidance system. And we don't want to change that guidance system because of the distance of the shot. What we want to do is to keep all of that the same so that it's, it's going to be accurate every time. And then we get more power in it as we need from the lower body. Yeah, I was just going to say that is that one of the things that we are always telling people is that and people are always saying, well, if I do push ups or if I do tricep extensions or whatever, will that make my shot uh, better from longer distance? 
The answer is no, because you want your lower body to be the power source. Yeah. That's kind of where you generate all of the uh, the effort for getting the shot to the basket. Right. Your upper body, kind of like the you know your shoulders and arms and and all that stuff, that's going to be your finesse. Yeah. And and you need to make sure that you're not muscling anything with your upper body because as soon as you start doing that, you add tension, which you add directly into the ball. And so the ball is either going to be not as accurate or it's also going to be uh, very live. So when it hits the rim or the backboard or whatever, it's just going to ricochet off. Right. But if you have that finesse and you have the accuracy, you're going to have a better chance for it to maybe if it does hit something, it's going to stay around the rim instead of just rebounding out. There's another element that kind of comes into play there too when we are trying to use too much of our, our, our shoulders for the shot, and that is our assist hand gets involved in the shot and we start peeling the basketball this way, which gives it sideways rotation. One of most everybody that we work with, everybody that we work with, you get to the point where we want that hand to come away as you finish the stroke. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. We're, let's let's do lightning round because we're getting so many questions today. We need to start it early. So okay. these are going to be short answers to your guys' questions. I promise. Uh, we're going to try to be as efficient as possible on this stuff. Um, <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you usually blow it in the first one. I know I do. Okay. This one is from – some of these we've kind of answered already, so we'll probably reference back to those. But um, – this one said, this is from Django Russ, who says, uh, A shot science, does jump ropes help with the vertical? Yes. It, it does help. How and much is, I'm, I, I'm at uh, I think loss it, to tell you. It probably, it, help, it helps with that and footwork and just and your explosion. coordination, explosion. Yeah, it's, it's good for all that. Uh, this one is from Abraham Sherian, who says, how can I increase my vertical? Go check out our vertical jump series on YouTube and our vertical jump handbook, and that will put you in a good spot. Um, this one is from Harris Cows, Cows um, who says, how do I get that instinct, which I see in a few players that always make the right pass or the right shot or the right decision experience? You know, that's just all experience. And one of the things that I, we hear from people all the time is, is uh, you know, I don't have, uh, I, I can't play relaxed when I play. I don't play very well with this group, but I play well with the other group. Well, the whole thing comes down to just developing confidence in yourself and the abilities. Confidence and in your skills. And understanding, uh, and that's another thing, that the aptitude for the game is so important. And aptitude is understanding what you see and what you need to do in response. Lightning I mean, round. Lightning round. Okay. I'll be quiet. No, I mean, that's fine. I, I, I think that, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're right. It, it's really, you need to get confidence in your skills and experience right absolutely okay this one is from adam taylor of taylor tech who says who are you guys rooting for to win the playoffs warriors warriors we're from the bay area yeah um let's see and we work with the santa cruz warriors which is their d-league team so we have uh you know close to special us. place in our heart for them um this is from jameson train who says hey i was wondering how to make varsity as a freshman i'm really good at basketball and i was wondering any tips for tryouts yes we have videos. Yeah, just go check out our videos. Make the team. How to make the team. Yeah. And and I think we even did a live show about tryouts and stuff like that. But go yeah. check those out, and I think you'll you'll find some some good nuggets in there. Yeah. Um, this one is from Abraham Sherian again, who says, how to become a better shooter and defender. Work on it. Yeah, just practice, practice, there's, practice. There's that's, no secret to it. That's what it all comes down to. Be smart and, and just put the effort into it. <laughs> uh, Gaston Naruto says, help my shot is bad. Let us know how, why it's bad. Yeah. Send us a video or something. We need to be able to help you. We can't help you if we have no idea. Yeah, exactly. um, and we would suggest checking out our videos too. Okay, this one is from Forever Christine or Christine E. I don't know. Christine E. Uh, she says, what drills can I practice to improve my ball handling skills? Any tips for point guards? Also, how can I improve my shooting speed? Oh, okay. that's going to be a tough one. All right, one at a time. Okay, uh, improve my ball handling skills. Go check out our videos. <laughs> Go check out our videos on helping uh, develop your ball handling skills. Exactly. Uh, we have tons of drills on there. Um, work on static and dynamic drills. Work on game speed, game intensity stuff. Um, but we have a ton of, of, of drills that we think will probably help right. you there. Right, right. And, and then as far as tip for point, bar, point guards, um, you know, uh, if you're working on your ball skills and you develop some uh, shooting ability as well, 
uh, the point guard stuff is probably going to come to you pretty good, uh, pretty quickly. Uh, the one thing you have to remember is that, first of all, you want to be a basketball player, and then uh, you can worry about positions. We talk about that all the time. Yeah, That's this, really important. That was one of our tips today is yeah. that you want to be a versatile player. Right. A lot of people focus on, I'm going to be a great point guard. I'm going to be a great post player. Yeah. If you put all the skills together beforehand, that stuff is so easy. Yeah. Being a point guard after you have the ability to dribble, shoot, pass, play defense, all that stuff. It does. It, it, when somebody says, hey, I want you to play the point guard, you just go, oh, all right, whatever. Let's go, yeah. Um, but if you're focusing on that before you really have those in place, that's going to make it real hard to be a versatile player that can play on any team. Yeah. Don't focus on that. Yeah. Focus on being a great all-around player. Have all the skills ready to go. Right. And then the last item there. Shooting speed. Okay. <laughs> this is all about getting your shot to be efficient, right? Yeah. So absolutely. you eliminate all of the parts that you don't need, all of the, the moving mechanisms that aren't necessary to your shot. We are always talking about making it efficient, clean, uh, make sure you're doing everything for a purpose. Um Start with your footwork, which should start before you catch the ball or pick it up off the dribble, um, and make sure that everything is connected. Exactly right. You know, when you start talking about shooting faster, you're actually sabotaging yourself because the faster you try to shoot the basketball, usually it means you're speeding everything up and uh, you're corrupting the shot when you do that. So the best thing you can do is kind of follow what Casey was saying there, and that is uh, be efficient in everything that you do with your shot and make sure that you have created a space to shoot the basketball. One of the biggest things that, that happens to most players is they shoot the ball and they're not really open for the shot. They don't know what an open shot is and they don't know how to create it either. That's the other thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> lightning round okay. people. Um, this one is from Zoran Yapuko who says, uh, Sir, good day. My question is what is the best dribble training? Uh, I would say check out our dribbling, yeah, our dribbling videos. videos. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have a ton on there. Um, part of it is too is that a lot of people think that there's some specific thing that they need to have put in front of them. Fact of the matter is, you should look at everything and piece together your workout for what you need it to be. Uh, you know, if you're struggling with uh, ball control, there's drills that, that address that. If you're struggling with uh, moving the ball up the court. There's drills that, that kind of address that. So you need to kind of look at the different stuff that we have on there and put it together yourself. Right. Um, but the thing is, consistency is really the key and building it up from the bottom up and not rushing it too fast. Yep, absolutely. Um, this one is from Liam PCU, who says, uh, do you have any tips to create space for a shot or a layup? Yes. We have a lot. Yeah. There, um, there's some with the ball. Yep. The dribble attacks. Right. Um, and some without the and, ball. and some yeah. offensive moves like the the hammer and and the diamond um, and the ones without the ball are are the ones that we call moving without the ball right. that playlist and there right. there's like the L cut the V cut the back door um, but if you look on our channel we have a ton of stuff yeah. look up the offensive moves look up um, the the moving without the ball and I think that will help you out okay this one is from Nate Thompson again he says. First AAU tournament next weekend. Any tips on what I should do? Uh, game day, pregame routines, mindset, nervousness. Okay, we got to do that one fast. Okay. Um, he's mostly asking, like, what should he do before the game? So yeah, um, I think a good thing to do is to kind of uh, get a sweat going, start putting some shots down, get a lot of shot repetitions in. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think you need to do anything too crazy, but um, I think getting kind of a good shooting routine going, get the ball handling working, Right. It's going to be different for everybody. Yeah, it is. And one of the things that, that I think is really huge, too, is in that time before you play, whether it's uh, an hour before or a day before, that you spend time visualizing the things that you know are probably going to happen during the course of the game and how you're going to respond to them. Visual, visualization is a, a, is a powerful tool in, in learning how to play this game, and, and I would really recommend that. Yeah, and don't overdo it or overthink it. Yeah. Just really get out there and, and put some shots up. Uh, get your rhythm going. That's really the only thing you need to worry about. Um, let's see. We need to just crush these right now because we got like five <laughs> minutes left. Um, this one is from uh, Harris again, who says, I'm not very athletic, six feet tall and 155 pounds, pretty skinny. What kind of point guard would I have to be to get a chance to play the next level and what I have to know uh, to play the two guard? Listen to the first part of our, our, of our video today. Yeah. Go back and listen to the recording. It's not about playing positions. It's about being a, an all-around player. player player.
Yeah. If, if you want to limit yourself and find yourself not playing, think about trying to play as a point guard or a shooting guard. That's, I mean, that's really how you do that. Yeah. Uh, think about playing as a general player and you will find yourself on a lot more teams being a lot more successful. Exactly. Um, and that's, that's, that's real talk. That's not us uh, with opinions. That's yeah. like, that's really what happens. Yeah, truly. Really. Um, this one is from Sane de Chamling who says, Hey, shot signs. I follow the tips that you, you gave me in the video a few months ago and have stopped obsessing on dunking. Good. Um, today I have come to ask your help on a different problem. Okay. Uh, I train and practice various moves and do a lot of shooting drills. However, I s never seem to be able to do it in a real game situation. I miss almost all of my shots and other aspects of my game, such as passing, rebounding, also seem to be bad. How do I improve on this? Thanks in advance. Okay, this is easy. Yeah, yeah. Part of it is is um, uh, consistency with your training. The other part of it is uh, getting game experience. And we talk about the three pillars of practice all the time. Right, right, right. I think it sounds like you're kind of hitting pillar one pretty hard, maybe hitting pillar two a little bit, which is not good. And that pillar two is, is game speed, game intensity practice. Right. And then pillar three, you just have to get experience playing in actual games. Right. And, and learn to have a little bit of confidence in yourself. One of the things that I know is really difficult for people when they're learning moves and whatnot is usually they fail, 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 and they give up on them. When in, react in reality, that's how we learn. We fail, fail, oh, success, then another success and a failure. And so we just kind of build on all that. Right. Um, uh, DeMonte Wheat in the Q&A asks, what are some shooting drills I can do alone? Form shooting drill, yeah. um, the spin spin uh, shooting drill that we talked about earlier from Dennis Stanton. Right. Um, play the ghost, uh, work on your free throws. Um, We've got a whole bunch of shooting visualize your shooting. Too, yeah, right? I mean, there's there's so many that it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. So uh, those are the kind of the ones we would suggest. Form shooting one being the number one. Yeah. Spin shooting being another great option yep. uh, that you should check out. Um, okay, we still got it crush some of these let's go this one's from um wade mercer asks can you give me any tips for a big guy like me yes stop focusing on being a big guy become an all-around player with skills in every aspect absolutely um luis felipe or two louis luis asks or says hey guys hey Hi. sorry i can't get your whole name there <laughs> um sasha malham anderson says hello uh, when I practice, I don't take jump shots. I take standstill shots because it's really uncomfortable to take jump shots. So how do I take jump shots? You, you practice you, them. You Boy, you're taking yourself out of the game by not practicing an important part of basketball. You figure it out. I mean, sure. Anything, Everything's uncomfortable it, that you're not used to doing. Yeah, anything that you do for the first few times, it yeah. doesn't feel very good. So you just got to work through that. And that's how you, you actually develop skills. Exactly right. I mean, exactly. if you if you just throw a ball to somebody that's never dribbled it, and say, hey, I want you to, to show me that Kyrie Irving move, it's never going to happen. They have to work on it, and it's going to be uncomfortable. So you That's just right. need to push past that initial uh, uncomfortable feeling. Um, June Jones is asking when, when to score and which ways are effective. Go check out our YouTube channel. we got a ton of uh, playlists on offensive right. moves and finishing moves. And um, drills for shooting. Uh, let's see. This one is from uh, ball out to you fall out. <laughs> Uh, he says, I feel man-to-man -man defense and footwork drills help a lot. Also teach push slide and tip and rip stance. Yeah, yep. tip and rip is really important. Yep. Um, uh, I wouldn't call it push slide. I would call it step slide yeah. or step drag. But, yeah, I think we're on the same page as you. Yeah. Um, uh, ball out to you, follow it. It says here, one shot shooting, one shot motion shooting will give you the best results in range. Yep. Yeah, so essentially – People are people talk about one shot or, or one motion and two motion shooting. Two motion shooting is essentially adding in what we think is is not good, and that's that element of of an extra variable and a spot where you lose power. So well, and you you lose that power because you hesitate, and you don't want to hesitate. Yeah, and so you want to have a fluid, connected shot from the from the floor up to your release, from the feet to your release. Um, Feet to fingers, I think is what we yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. So you, if you have that, your shot's going to be more efficient. It's going to be quicker. It's going to have less uh, variables going on, so it's going to be more accurate. And, yes, you will have power all the way up through it. Right. Um, this one is from Adam Frederick, who says, my nephews will be attending an unsigned senior showcase game for players who aren't signed for college yet. What are some things that they should do to prepare? Well, they should have their skills in check where they need to be. 
Uh, but the, the kind of second component of that is the stuff that we talk about in the how to make the team and the tryout videos. Yes, yes. And, you know, I can't encourage enough that they have really positive comportment of themselves while they're on the floor. Coaches are always checking out what players do. How do they respond to their coach? How do they respond to situations on the floor? Those things are really important. I've seen players who just kind of uh, act like real donkeys as they come off the floor, and you can see coaches' faces, uh, college coaches, they'll turn away or shake their head. That's when the line goes right through that guy's name. Exactly. And so comportment is so important in addition to having your skills ready to go. Yeah. Um, But yeah, check out those videos, how to make the team and the tryout videos, especially we did one ourselves, but we also did some with uh, Casey Hill. And I think you need to check those out. Um, Carrie Wistrich says, when guarding a faster player on the perimeter, how close should I play defense on him? I don't want to be too close and allow him to blow Miami, but do not want to give him too much space to shoot any tips. You just answered your question. You got to play a medium distance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You got to be able to. And you got to experiment with them a little bit too. Don't always show them the same look. Maybe you crowd them once in a while and then get off of them. So they're always having to make decisions about what you're doing or going to do. Yeah. And I mean, you got to, you beat them to the spot and kind of just get the experience playing. Jeremy Sirix says, how do I get better? Practice, experience, just play. Right. Um, Michaela says, hi, what's up? (laughs) Um, Moha Damin Asad says, I'm very tall, but I want to gain handles. How? Get to work. Get to work on those, those handles that, You'd be surprised how quickly they come around for you. Um, Maricela Escamilla says, Escamilla says, what if you're shy in school and don't perform the same as you do at home? That's what that's what we uh, we have a video on that called. Um, don't we have something on that? Like make and practice. Or yes, we do. Make and practice miss in games exactly. or something like that. Yeah, we do. Basically, it's because you're not approaching the three, three pillars of practice again. Yeah. Uh, you got to get the, the dialed in kind of form shooting. And then you got to get the game speed, game intensity. Then you got to get the game experience. And Shark Mirza says, hello. And I think we had one question on Facebook that I wanted to get to. This one is from Fabian de Bruges, Bruin. Oh, God. You guys' names are killing me here. Um, How do I become a better three point shooter? I know the basics from Shot Science on YouTube, but my shots are off. Work progressively back using the form shooting drill. Right. Too many people try to shoot that close shot. And then step back and shoot the long shot. you got to work yourself back in stepping stones. Exactly. And the thing that I would encourage you to do is go look at that video, which we noted earlier, and that is make the three-pointer, get your legs into it. That will help you a whole bunch in understanding the power source for your longer shots. And the form shooting. I mean, that's yeah, And the form shooting drill. I mean, that is essential. You can't just expect that you, you can shoot from short range yeah. and then go and, and be able to drop these, these long bombs. I mean, that just does not... <laughs> happen at no, all no, no. um okay last question okay uh let's let's pick a good one here um somebody's asking how do they get quicker instantly that doesn't happen no um this is from harrison he says my crossover is kind of funny because i haven't really played a lot how do i get the defense moving and how do i defend the most efficient where should the hands be okay we have videos on this yeah, so we we're going to send videos. you to that yeah. our crossover video is on youtube and you check that out it's about selling the move you have to make them thinking that you're doing something and do something else. Oh, hold on. Um, and then uh, in terms of defense, we have defense 101. So you need to check that out. Uh, and that's what we that's where we would send you. Yeah. Right? Exactly. exactly. Um, a lot of these a lot of these questions we have videos on, and that's where we would send you guys. But yeah. thanks so much for watching. Thanks, guys. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys again next week. Remember, if you are not following us on all of our shot science stuff, we are shot science on everything. Uh, Twitter, Google Plus, Facebook. Um, we are on Snapchat and Instagram. And if you follow us on all those things, we, we're doing different things on all those platforms. And we would love to have you there. If you have questions during the week between our live shows, let us know. And we will, geez, somebody's trying to get a hold of us. And we will, uh, we will do our best to answer your guys' questions. And... Uh, Anything you can think of, oh, share share these these live shows so that we can actually talk to you guys um, uh, and actually bring in coaches and, and talk to you guys with them. Uh, that helps us bring more great guests in. So we're yeah. going to thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week, right? A special, uh, special uh, see you later to Zach Pate, okay? Did you just pull that one out of nowhere? Where's I that? did. All right, see you guys later. Thanks for, thanks for watching.